So this may come as a surprise to some of my subscribers. I don't work for Starlink. Uh, let's get that clear. Are we clear? I've had a lot of people in the comments ask if I work for Starlink. Am I selling Starlink? I think even some of my friends and family don't even know what Starlink is. What are you doing with this Starlink thing? What are you gonna do with your life? I don't have any secret knowledge that I can share with you, but what I do have today to share with you is an awesome interview that I did with Warren Redlick. You may be familiar with him if you are interested in this niche, in this world of Starlink. Insane, big money numbers for Starlink, Neuralink, The Boring Company, and Tesla in four minutes. We have some awesome future predictions, what Starlink could look like in just the next five years from now. And he also has a lot of great insight into Starlink. So I hope that you enjoy this video. Let's get into it. Talk a little bit more about kind of your uh, revenue breakdown or you know prediction that you have formulated. One of the big questions is how many customers are there for Starlink? So when I started thinking about this, I came up with a rough back of the envelope guess that 100 million people in the world, or there would be 100 million customers who don't currently have great internet and are willing to pay $100 a month, okay? And I, I softened the $100 a month to $1,000 a year. $100 a month is actually $1,200 a year. But to come up with easy numbers, I called it $1,000 a year. So 100 million customers times $1,000 a year is $100 billion a year in revenue. Now, I made a video, a short video where I talked about that. I probably done, talked about it in at least one other video, but I made a short video where I talked about that among other things. And less than 24 hours later, there was a, an article saying that a survey had been done and that there were an estimated 65 million customers for Starlink in the United States alone. So my 100 million number is probably low. And globally, the world, the number might be 300 million rather than 100 million. So that's 300 billion in revenue a year rather than 100 billion in revenue a year. So that's a that's a ballpark and that's to me that's without lowering the price. If you lower the price to say $50 a month which they pretty clearly could do then you might expand the customers a lot because I you know I, there's a question I don't know the answer to. So when in a rich country we can just pay $100 a month and we don't really even you know it's hard it's a lot of Americans can afford $100 a month if it's going to get them really if they don't have good internet it's going to get them really good internet a lot of people will pay it. There's actually a government program that, test, that SpaceX is working with to provide internet access to people who can't afford it in rural areas. So right here, Warren is referring to the Rural Digital Opportunities Fund. And back in December, Starlink was awarded nearly $900 million in FCC subsidies. And this is all to bring internet to rural areas. These next generation networks will bring greater economic opportunity to rural Americans who for far too long have fallen on the wrong side of the digital divide. I'm thrilled that we have set up the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund and I look forward to many more Americans benefiting from the digital revolution. Over $9 billion in funds were awarded to 180 companies. SpaceX got about a tenth of those funds in that phase one auction. So basically, this is just designed to be an incentive for broadband providers like SpaceX to bring service to the underserved and hard to reach areas, rural areas of the United States. And also keep in mind, the subsidies will be distributed over the next 10 years in equal monthly payments. So what does this all mean and why should we care? Well, basically this is SpaceX's first major customer and this will ensure that they have a source of revenue as long as they continue to meet the FCC's criteria. In large cities, in densely populated areas, I believe that a Starlink satellite, the Starlink satellites would not be able to serve every customer who wants it. Um, as long as you, I shouldn't say that, every customer who might conceivably want it. They, they just, um, the, the, the number of customers that a Starlink satellite can serve has some limit. Right. You know, it has a certain amount of bandwidth and each user is gonna want a certain amount of bandwidth. And when you get to a very densely populated city, it just couldn't possibly serve everyone. In rural areas, even, even suburban areas or areas that are not far off the beaten path in cities, sometimes it will make sense because sometimes it's hard for it's hard for people to get good connections when they're not in the right spot, even 
in or near a city. And those people will, will benefit from it. And then there are other applications where I suspect that Starlink is going to go much faster than its current speed to a gigabit or even 10 gigabit potential Ethernet con uh, internet connection. And if you get to that speed, then there might be some customers in cities who are willing to pay for it um, for various reasons that are probably above what I more than I would know. Right now, Starlink is about a thousand satellites whizzing around, whizzing above the earth or around the earth. And it doesn't have a lot of customers yet. They're losing money like crazy right now. As Elon described it as a massive negative cash flow situation right now, the ca a deep chasm of negative cash flow. Until they get up enough customers, until they're generating enough revenue, it's a deep chasm of negative cash flow. I think also their expenses are higher while they're still figuring out how to work everything to work. Once they get everything up and running and humming, then their costs will go down and their revenue will be higher. But if you look, you go out, let's say five years, say, where's Starlink going to be in five years? Well, maybe it's a little longer than five years, but I think it's about five years. They will have 42,000 satellites orbiting the earth, roughly 42,000 satellites. And they will be serving, let's say, 100 million customers for now. It might be 300 million, but let's go with 100 million customers for now. 100 million customers, $100 billion a year in revenue. So one of the questions you get to is, well, what's the cost of running this thing? So probably the biggest cost, I could be wrong, but probably the biggest cost is launching and maintaining a satellite network. And what people don't realize is Starlink satellites are planned to last five years, at which point they deorbit, which means they slow down a little bit and they fall into the Earth's atmosphere, burn up and disappear. They have to be replaced every five years. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up getting six years out of them or seven years out of them, but we'll, we'll call it five years because that's the number they've used. Right. So if you have to replace them, we'll go with 40,000 satellites because the math gets you. I like making easy math. I'm, I'm, I'm like Mr. Simple, make everything as simple as possible. So if you figure you got 40,000 satellites and you got to replace, you got to replace uh, one fifth of them every year, right? You got to replace each one every five years. So you got to replace one fifth of the network every, every year. Then that's 8,000 launches. 8,000 satellites have to be launched into orbit every year. The current launch cost, my estimate of a Starlink satellite is a Falcon 9 rocket launches 60 satellites and a Falcon 9 launch is priced at $50 million, but I'm gonna say Star, uh, SpaceX's internal cost is probably closer to 30 million and they launched 60 Starlinks. So that works out to $50,000 a satellite to launch them. No one really knows exactly how much it costs to make a Starlink satellite. It's, I'm pretty confident it's less than $250,000. And my prediction is that as they scale, they're gonna get that cost down to around $100,000. And then you've got Starship, which they're testing Starship, the, the rocket that they keep crashing in Texas, <laughs> um, which is which people think is like a bad thing. No, it's a test flight. It's supposed to crash sometimes. It's OK. Um, that one wasn't going to be it wasn't going to be the one that was actually launching stuff into orbit. They're just testing when they are able to start actually launching satellites into orbit on Starship. They're going to carry 400 Starlink satellites in a launch instead of 60. And because they're going to recover the second stage, you know what you saw, this spectacular display in the sky of a second stage disintegrating. The second stage is going to land and be reused. And so the primary cost of a, of a SpaceX, of a Starship launch is going to be fuel, and it's going to cost about $900,000 in fuel. So if you figure all in, the cost of a launch is going to be about $2 million, and you're going to launch 400 satellites, you get to $5,000 launch cost per satellite, which is essentially zero when you're considering that the cost of the satellite is $100,000. So I like to use a simple number of $100,000 a satellite to build it and launch it. Again, oversimplification, maybe I'm a little low here, but run with it for a second. So you have 8,000 satellites a year at $100,000 a piece, right? And I believe that works out to um, $800 million a year. Okay, not 800 billion, 800 million. Okay, so $800 million is your principal cost a year for operating a network that's generating $100 billion in revenue. So figure Warren's being too generous, Warren's not including everything and say, let's say it's $10 billion a year to operate everything. And there's other costs, there's ground stations, there's other things you've got to pay for. There's staffing, there's, I'm sure there's customer service, sales, there's a lot of costs that you're going to have. But if, you're, if your annual cost is $10 billion and your annual revenue is $100 billion, then your annual profit is gross profit is $90 billion a year. Say my $90 billion in profit is too high. Let's cut it back to $50 billion in profit. 
and you give it a price earnings ratio of 30, which in my opinion is low. Apple's price earnings ratio is about 35. Amazon's price earnings ratio is like 75. Oh, wow. um, but if you give it a price earnings ratio of 30, then you get to a $1.5 trillion market cap. And if you figure I'm being, if, if you get more optimistic and you say, you know, maybe a hundred billion is more accurate, maybe they're going to have 300 million users instead of hundred million users, you might get to a $5 trillion market cap. And keep in mind that SpaceX was valued in its last funding round at $75 billion. The Starlink component of SpaceX alone could be worth 5 trillion in five or 10 years. So if you could buy SpaceX stock at a valuation of $100 billion now, you have a 50X opportunity just on the Starlink component of SpaceX. I'm not sure that the rest of SpaceX is worth that much, you know, anywhere comparable to what Starlink is worth. But that's, that's the idea is ultimately you have something that is worth potentially $1.5 to $5 trillion. Um, and I think my numbers might be conservative. I mean, maybe I'm optimistic. I tend to be a very optimistic person when I look at these things, but you know, 100 million customers isn't crazy. There's 7 billion people on the planet. By the time they're done, maybe there'll be 8 billion. It's not a big share of the market. Right. $100 a, $100 a month isn't that much. I'm cutting it down to $1,000 a year. You know, and you can cut my numbers down. To get to that 50 billion number, you can, you're, you can say we're kicking taxes out. We're going to reduce the prices on something. And we haven't even included, like, there are certain customers that are willing to pay more like a cruise ship, you could create Starlink for cruise ships and they would pay a lot of money for that service because you got 5,000 people on the ship. They're going to put 10 Starlink receivers on the ship, if not more. And, you know, they're going to pay a lot of money for that. Commercial airplanes will pay for it. We've already tested it in military jets. Yep. Um, high frequency traders who are, who are trying to do some sort of games with Wall Street and they're in London and they want like a faster connection to the New York Stock Exchange or they're in Tokyo, whatever, the, the, some of these high frequency traders, they're going to be able to have faster, lower latency connections from say London to New York or Tokyo to New York than they would have through fiber through the ocean. And they will pay millions for that. So there's all kinds of revenue that we haven't even thought about. When, when I come up with my hundred billion number, that's not even including all the other potential revenue. Wow. Military applications, who knows? Some people are excited that it's only 99 a month with no data caps but you know do you think that that price will change uh considering how much it costs to manufacture the units sure so there's two different issues there there's the 500 dollars up front to get the starlink satellite dish so i recorded this interview with warren a couple weeks ago i've been working on it for you guys but in a very recent article we actually learned for sure that initially it costs spacex three thousand dollars to produce each satellite dish so your dishy mick flat face was actually a lot of money to manufacture so you know you're paying 499 dollars to get it but um, it costs a lot more in the beginning. Now, I guess that they've reduced that manufacturing cost to $1,500 and then even $1,300 with a brand new version of the satellite dish, which just rolled out. So that is good that they are reducing the cost of making these user terminals, but uh, they're definitely still losing a lot of money there. I suspect that when SpaceX decides to manufacture them in volume, just like they figure out how to manufacture Tesla's in volume and they figure out how to manufacture Starlink satellites in volume, they'll find a way to manufacture the Starlink home receiving device uh, in volume for less money and it won't cost them as much. I heard it cost them like either $1,200 or $2,400 for them right now. And they make it up because you're paying $100 a month and you're not going to quit. And if you keep paying $100 a month, you eventually catch up on that. But, you know, ultimately, I expect, you know, the Wi-Fi router is probably going to cost them less than $100. The there's two components. There's, the, there's two major components. There's the antenna, which connects with the satellite. And there's the Wi-Fi router that sends the signal around your house. And the Wi-Fi router component probably costs SpaceX less than $100 to make, maybe even $50 to make. So it's a question of how, how well they can manufacture that phased array antenna component and it's over my head, but I suspect they'll figure out a way to do that cheaper and cheaper over time. The $100 a month, I think that price will be fixed for a while. Elon has said it will come down over time. Um, ultimately, if you look at, I have a, my own model for how much I think, how much revenue and profit I think Starlink generates. And it will make sense for them to lower the price when they've got enough bandwidth that they, can justify lowering price because the increasing demand will mean more revenue. 
And that's a, that's a uh, supply and demand business calculation that we don't have the inside numbers from SpaceX to know what they're thinking. I have a general sense of the market and I, I don't think they need to lower the price below $100 a month for a long time, but eventually they probably will. Um, and I could see certain circumstances like if the Starlink satellite is flying over a poor country in, say, Africa, and very few people can afford $100 a month, I could see them saying, we'll lower the price because the, the satellite isn't doing anything, right? You might as well lower the price over a poor country. If as long as the the circle that it projects down, the, the, the area that it's covering is not covering rich countries that are going to use up all the bandwidth that the satellite has, you might as well charge less and get some more revenue and provide something great for the people of that country. Right. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some variation in pricing. Although Elon has said price will be the same all over the world. I wouldn't be surprised to see some pricing variation at some point. And another interesting tidbit that I just learned is that the SpaceX president, Gwen Shotwell, doesn't think the company will add tiered pricing anytime soon. So basically where a customer would pay based on the level of service that they want. Well, speaking at a low earth orbit digital forum just a couple days ago on a virtual panel, she said that they don't think they're going to be doing tiered pricing to customers. They're going to try and keep it as simple as possible, as transparent as possible. So right now there are no plans to tier for customers. Pretty interesting. Well, of course, if you are a fan of Dishy McFlatface, hit that like button, hit subscribe. And even if you're feeling really generous today, you can hit the bell notification so that you don't miss any of my videos. For all of you who are new to the channel or returning, I really appreciate your support. It's so nice to see you and I can't wait to see you soon.